Hello, and welcome to Refurbishing Solidarity, where our focus is on defragging tech activism together. This is the first part of our series with Clarissa Redwine. Clarissa is joining us today to tell her personal story in joining Kickstarter United. She's a founding member of this historic union, the first ever in the tech industry. Clarissa, welcome to the show. Hey, Chewy. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks so much for agreeing to meet up with us. We really want to keep this show kind of centered around the stories of workers and like we want it to be really personal. Um, so could you start off just kind of by talking about like what led for you to joining Kickstarter and then how all of this began for you? Yeah, yeah. So before I joined Kickstarter, I was running a uh, an accelerator for robotics startups. Um, I was a program manager for that for that program with Qualcomm. And I had always been interested in hardware and how creators actually make physical items and all of the many nuances that go into making <laughs> something. And yeah, whenever I was chatting with one of my friends at Kickstarter, he mentioned that there was a job opening that was pretty perfect for me. Um, so I joined Kickstarter as the West Coast Outreach Lead for Design and Technology, which okay. means that I just hopped up and down the coast meeting creators and helping them launch projects. Yeah, yeah. And then would you want to know why I joined Kickstarter United? Is that something yeah. also? So, so then that's the next thing, yeah. What led to that decision for you? I think like most organizers and like most, um, I guess, participants in worker action, it was a lot of different things. I uh, had been hearing that my coworkers were having struggles at work and gosh, I didn't know how to address that or how to help them in the current system that we had. And one day we had this situation um, that some people may be familiar with, but we call it always punch Nazis <laughs> internally at Kickstarter, where um, there was a comic book on the site that had launched basically a satire of a, a superhero flying around punching Nazis. Like how classic could you get? Uh, that's, I mean, I think like, all major superheroes yeah. have gone through a period where they've all like punched <laughs> yeah. Nazis. So yeah. yeah, so we had this at the time Kickstarter had this policy of like the idea of punching up where if someone is criticizing someone in power, then you leave the project up. And so mm. the idea of punching Nazis was the idea of uh, punching up. We don't know exactly why they wanted to take the project down because the timing was kind of too coincidental with the Breitbart article. It seemed like the project comes on Kickstarter, Breitbart writes an article about it saying that Kickstarter should take it down and then leadership wants to take it down. That sequence of events made it pretty obvious that Kickstarter was just acting according to like risk aversion. Like they just didn't want any more press. They didn't want to fight with Breitbart. They weren't willing to stand up for this project. They also sort of brought up that the, the project was inciting violence because it did have like, hey, do you want to be a Nazi puncher? Here's how you do it. At the same time, like, I think Captain America had the same thing where he was like, hey, if you see a Nazi, you can be a Nazi hunter too. We have violent video games on Kickstarter. We had other violent comic books of people like punching other people. It seemed like they were making an exception rather than following the rules, but they were making an exception saying that they had to take the project down because it broke the rules. And we were like, that's not quite true. What it came down to is the staff saw Kickstarter bending to an alt-right publication and basically like allowing a Nazi PR stunt to take place and dismantle this project that was anti-Nazi. Like they were having a real effect on a project that was speaking out against uh, racism and everything Nazis stand for. By taking down the project, they were siding with the Nazis. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's why staff got so upset. It just didn't feel like it lived up to our values or like the spirit of our rules. So what happened was after, um, <laughs> okay, I'll tell you the whole story and you could like edit it. <laughs> you, you can edit it together so it's shorter. Basically, the trust and safety team was uh, overruled by senior leadership and by our um, head of legal and said, hey, even though you said that this project should stay up, it's gonna be taken down. 
Like we're taking this out of your hands, even though it's your job to make these decisions. After that happened, some of the folks on the trust and safety team started spreading the word that this had happened and that management was basically making a bad call or at least making a call in secrecy when they should be doing it in the light. The word started spreading across the company and at the same time, someone posted a link to an article that was like, many tech companies are aiding the funding of the alt-right or Nazis or something like that. And they posted this article and said, I'm so glad that our company doesn't do things like this and that we are on the right side of history. And someone from the trust and safety team commented in Slack, hey, I wouldn't agree because we've made this decision and I think this decision is helping the alt-right and not living up to our values. And then <laughs> everyone in the company started slacking and saying like, what? I didn't know about this decision. Can you tell us more about why it's being made? And tagging our senior leadership and saying, can you tell us why this decision is being made? And it became what management later called a slack mob. They were like the <laughs> slack mob. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, and they were very upset about the slack mob and a large number of staff stopped working to become part of this conversation on slack. And they requested a meeting with senior leadership. Senior leadership said, okay, we'll have a meeting with you. Let's all get together in person and talk about this. And like a dozen people stood up and said why they thought this project should stay up and why they thought this was a bad call from management. And the next day, management reversed their decision and said, hey, we're leaving this up, but you guys need to stay respectful. Like they used a lot of heavy handed, uh, yeah, wording to, to make it clear that they were not happy that they had reversed this decision. And we were all very excited. Staff thought, oh my gosh, we came together, we stopped a, a really um, bad call from management that could have hurt our brand and just stopped a project from funding. Um, so we were really excited until the retaliation started and everyone started getting pulled into separate rooms. They didn't have any witnesses of what management was saying to them and they were all told that they were out of line. And then the person who actually posted on Slack, oh, I disagree that we're on the right side of history because management has made this call. She was fired. She was, uh, she was pressured into resigning. Um, and and that was like a big wake up call where we were like, hey, it, you know, collective action is great, but obviously we're very vulnerable when we do these things. So we saw as a group that, yes, we can take collective action, but without structural change, we didn't have the protection in place to uh, not lose our jobs after we, <laughs> after we spoke up. So I think that's about the time when people started talking about a union. Um, and that was about the time when I started um, thinking like, hmm, how can we, how can we make the workplace better? Um, but I joined the union because uh, Taylor Moore, one of the other main organizers, yeah. he, he gave me a call. I was in San Francisco, he was in Brooklyn, and he was like, hey, do you remember all these problems uh, that we, are all aware of internally at Kickstarter. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And he was like, you know, we're thinking maybe a union could be the solution to that. And I think I told him something like, oh, I need to think about it. At that time, I was moving across the country to work at Kickstarter HQ. And even though I knew very little about unions, for some reason, I knew that it was somewhat of a dangerous topic. Um, so I was like, you know, I need to think about it. And the next day I sent him a text that was like, I'm in, let's do this. So yeah, that's, that's sort of how I joined. Thanks for joining us. If you would like to watch part two, it is now available. There we talk about the context around the organizing of Kickstarter United. Join our Patreon to get early access to full interviews and to join our Discord discussions. Please help this series by spreading it and interacting with your algorithms. And remember, a conversation is a first step towards solidarity.